Okay, so we've talked a lot about payoffs and game theory, matrices and actors choosing things. And one thing we've left out of this discussion is this notion of power. Um, who gets to make these choices? Um, so the power, there's a billion different definitions of power depending on what social science you're studying. Um, political science as a whole field is, is focused on power and, and who exerts political power. Um, in economics land, what we're talking about is this definition of power. This comes from the core reading, um, where it's essentially the ability to do what you want in opposition to the intentions of others. So it, it's how well you can get your own preferences um, kind of uh, put in place. And so in situations like this, here's a simple game theory matrix. Rather than having numbers, we're just using words here. Um, so if Anil and Bala are in this new country and they have to decide what side of the road to drive on, um, they either have to both choose um, to drive on the left side of the road or both choose to drive on the right side of the road. Otherwise, bad things happen. If they one drives on the left and one drives on the right, then they're going to crash, and we don't want that. And same thing here. If Anil chooses right and Bala chooses left, that's bad. So either one of these outcomes, if they decide to be a left-driving country or a right-driving country, either one is great. Um, but who gets to decide that? Um, so far, what we've been saying is it doesn't matter. Either one will work. But what if Anil already has a car that is left-driving? Um, he brought it from a different country and he, he spent lots of money on it and he really likes his car and Bala doesn't have any cars yet and so that lends Anil some degree of power and he has some say or he he will be more um, more willing to to exert that power and make it so that they end up in this outcome because he already has that left driving car he doesn't want to decide a right driving situation because then he has to switch cars and he doesn't want that so he wants this situation here if Bala doesn't have enough power, maybe Bala also has a right driving car, but Anil is stronger or has more money or somehow can exert more power, then they're going to end up not necessarily where the payoffs are best for everybody, but um, where the payoffs kind of reflect what the more powerful want. Um, also, if they decide on some outcome, um, it's often very hard to change away from that outcome. And that gets us into this world of efficiency, um, where what we can do is we can measure which of these outcomes is good based on um, the alternative outcomes and if it hurts anybody to move to an alternative outcome. So according to this Pareto rule, this is the official textbook definition, but we'll go we'll do a much better one. This is kind of word, or weirdly worded here, where there's no alternative allocation where one person would be better off and nobody would be worse off, which seems weird. What this really means is the most economic pie or the most utility, the most points um, is consumed without taking pieces away from others, without removing points from others. So let's give an illustration of this. So here's our Anil and Bala uh, prisoner's dilemma situation here, um, where they're both going to end up poisoning each other because that's how the incentives are structured. This is the Nash equilibrium here. They could move away from this Nash equilibrium and make everybody better off. If they could somehow get to this 3-3 three, three world, um, going from 2 to 3 for Anil and going from 2 to 3 for Bala, that's great. They could happily do that. But moving from 2 to 1, that is bad for Anil. That breaks this rule of Pareto efficiency, and you don't want to do that. Moving from 2 to 4 for Bala, that would be good. That's an improvement for him. But according to this rule here, it hurts one of them, and so you can't do it. Um, another way of looking at this is to actually do a graph. Um, this is from the core textbook here, where if you plot their different payoffs, these are the four different combinations you have, where Anil, so this is the I and the T, the I is the magic bugs, the T is the, the poison here. Um, so you could have this situation here where Anil is using the poison and Bala is using the magic bugs, and so that gets you into this 4-1 situation. Here's the other 4-1 situation. You could hit this 3-3 three, three point right here. That's this right here, where you have 3-3. Three, three. But because it's a prisoner's dilemma, you're stuck at this 2-2 two, two world here. But there are better situations you could get to. If you could move from this 2-2 two, two up to this 3-3, three, three, that makes both parties better off, and that would be more efficient. But if you try to move, let's switch colors so you can see it better. 
if you try to move from this point up to here, that is better for Bala. He goes up from two to four, but it actually hurts Anil. It moves Anil down one point, down to here and then up. And so that is not Pareto efficient. You don't want to do that. Um, same thing here. You could move from this point to here if you messed with policy levers um, to kind of encourage this outcome. But if you do that, um, that's good for Anil. Anil goes from two to four, so yay. But Bala goes from two to one which is bad, we don't want to do that. So according to the rule of Pareto efficiency, the only Pareto efficient outcome here is going from this bad prisoner's dilemma thing to making everybody better off. If you do some sort of policy outcome that makes one person a lot better off, but then hurts one person, then according to this rule of Pareto efficiency, you cannot do it. Um, and so that's kind of the world you're stuck in. You could get away from the two, four, Socially, it'd be better. Um, this 2-2 two, two right here, that's four utils for society. If you ended up at 4-1 or 1-4, that's five utils for society. That's almost as good as the six. Um, and so that's better for the world in general. But in order to move from here to here, it's going to hurt one person. Or to move from here to here, it's also going to hurt one person, just the other person. And so according to this rule, you can't. You're stuck. Um, with 2-2 two, two, and thus you can get to the 3-3. Three, three. Um, we see the same situation with the tragedy of the common situation with the water um, either using normal water or double water use. What we have is we have multiple Pareto efficient outcomes. If you are in this 3-3 three, three world here, you could move um, to 2. You can't do that because that would hurt farmer 1. You could move from 3 to 8. That's good. Um, but you, if you're stuck at the 3-3 three, three world, you can't actually um, improve anything. Um, same thing here. You can't go from 3 to 2 or 3 to 8. Or you can go from 3 to 8. That's good. But you can't go from 3 to 2. That's bad. That breaks Pareto efficiency. So if you're at 3-3, three, three, that is a Pareto efficient outcome for just these options. You could also go from 3 to 6 and 3 to 6. So you can move to one place. If you happen to be in this situation where one farmer is cheating and the other one's not, then you're going to want to improve that. But that means you want to get to use water normally, which means this person would have to go from 8 to 6, um, which hurts them. And so according to the rule of Pareto efficiency, you can't. Um, that's a bad, a bad outcome. You're not supposed to do anything that's Pareto inefficient. Moving from 2 to 6 is Pareto efficient. That's a good improvement for farmer 2. But in order to get them up to six, you have to hurt farmer one, who's getting the benefit from doubling their water use. And so according to this rule, you can't do that. Um, in this situation, there are actually three Pareto efficient outcomes. If you land on any of these, um, technically, according to the rules of game theory here, you can't move away from them because those are um, efficient. Um, if you happen to land here, neat, that's the good one. Um, where nobody's cheating. If you land here, that's great for farmer two and sucks to be farmer one, but according to the rules of Pareto efficiency, you're stuck as farmer one with the two points and you just have to live with farmer two cheating because moving to a different outcome would hurt farmer two and you don't, you can't do that. So having Pareto efficiency be kind of the best standard for deciding if something is fair and good and equitable is not actually that great. Um, in part, there can be more than one Pareto efficient allocation, or there can sometimes be no Pareto efficient allocations, um, where you can't move to any other option because um, you're just kind of stuck in, in that situation. So as we saw with this um, tragedy of the common situation, there are three efficient outcomes. Even though one is better for society than the other two, this has 12 points for society, this has 10 points for society, but according to the rules, you can't go from 10 to 12 because it's going to hurt somebody. Um, there are also no rankings. It's not, we can't say this is the, the better Pareto efficient one, but these are okay. Um, they're all just Pareto efficient. We can't say this is super efficient and less efficient. They're all just like you're stuck at that place. Um, so it's not a good way of, of ranking stuff here. And it also doesn't consider power or ideas of fairness. Um, 
Again, if you're a farmer too, and you happen to land in this world here where you can cheat and the other person's not cheating, cool. Um, that's great for you. And then that gives you more power. And then that is kind of self-reinforcing. The next season, you'll have extra money because you cheated this season. Um, and your other competition won't have as much money because they didn't get as much profit because you were cheating. And then that will perpetuate and perpetuate into the future and make you more powerful. But it's a pretty efficient outcome, so we can't do anything about it. Um, so again, it's not the greatest standard, um, but it's often used as a standard here. Um, and so one thing we want to do in, in our economics class here, which lots of econ classes don't consider, is this idea of fairness and power and equity. We care about these allocations and what is kind of better for society instead of just sucks to be farmer one because you didn't happen to cheat one season. Um, we want to go beyond kind of just this Pareto standard and look at other standards of what makes a good allocation of resources. So that's what we'll talk about in the next section.